Uh, good evening, friends. Uh, welcome, everyone, who has joined our live session today at five. As uh, we have just started this new series from last week, like uh, Arcs Aussies. So here we are, as we have promised, to be live every Friday to answer your queries and clear your doubts in regards to immigration matters and some course information if somebody has some doubts. Uh, my name is Diljan Singh and I'm a migration agent working at Aussies. And with me today is Mr. Kamal Ji Singh. He is also a Mara agent and he will be answering all the queries and I would help him as well. So we'll just go together and try to answer as many as possible because that there'll be a time constraint. And since we are live on uh, various uh, social media platforms, there may be a lot of questions, but it is not possible to answer every question but we'll try to go step by step and try to answer as many as we can. And hopefully we would get there and answer everyone's question and try to give you a clarity and clear the doubts so that you have a, uh, basically a, a nice picture, clear picture of what you need to do in the future and how do you proceed and get your dream come true of getting a PR in Australia. All right, Kamaljit, would you like to say before we can start? Yes, it? guys. Uh... Again, we have started this hashtag uh, as causes uh, in regards to uh, we'll be answering uh, any sort of questions uh, in regards to any kind of matters uh, in regards to your visa uh, situations. Uh, so uh, moreover, we'll also be uh, helping you out if you've got any educational inquiries uh, possible. And uh, in coming some weeks, uh, you'll be interacting with the different uh, sort of agents, uh, expertise with different sort of visa matters uh, who will be guiding you through in regards to uh, what are the criteria, eligibility criteria, assessment criteria, and hopefully you will have a better understanding uh, that if you are planning to lodge any kind of visas, uh, that will guide you through uh, in this process. All right, guys. So while we wait for uh, viewers to join in, uh, because uh, being a Friday, you know, and uh, five o'clock, so it, it may take some time for people to join in. But I'm sure if anyone's on the way traveling, you know, please be. Uh, on you know, on air and ask your questions so that we can help uh, as many as we can. So before we get the questions coming in, I would just like to ask a few questions in uh, regards to different topics. And guys, uh, this is not about a particular visa category or a particular uh, sort of a topic. So you are free to put in your queries in relation to any sort of a matter which is related to the a visa matters so it can be a partner visa student visa or whatever visas you know they are so and if you have any queries so before we get the questions coming in uh, we would just like to discuss uh upon the recent round which we had and that is a victorian invitation round so we would just uh like to ask kamaljit you know regarding this uh recent round so what are the trends that was what uh, the trends had been seen what are the points requirements and how did Victoria go about choosing the occupations and what did they look for? So if you can just uh, say something and how do this uh, invitation, what do they consider in this place? Uh, yes, uh, Diljan. Uh, so uh, in regards to uh, getting the invitation, guys, uh, we are seeing that uh, after December, we haven't seen any 189 invitation round being happening. Uh, again, you know, a lot of uh, social media things are going around over, you know, candidates being invited. 35,000 invitations were given okay. for 189. Uh, again, uh, once they gave the invitations for uh, 189 in December, we haven't seen any uh, sort of invitation given till date for 189 and 491 family sponsored visas. So that leaves us uh, with the only two options, which is 190 mm -hmm. and 491 visas. Uh, these visas being, uh, you know, nominated by the state, uh, different sort of state criteria have to be met. Uh, but nowadays we are seeing that uh, Victoria uh, is has been one of those favorite states, and Western Australia has been one of those favorite states who have been inviting candidates for 190. Absolutely, yeah. Yes, and uh, in regards to Victoria invitation round, which was uh, again held a couple of weeks ago, uh, they have again focused more on health sector, Absolutely. Uh, they have focused again more on, uh, we are talking about nurses, you know, yeah. uh, social workers. Yeah. Yes, social workers, they have gone on to inviting teachers and some of the IT occupations as well. So again, we can't say, uh, Diljan, that they are more focusing on every certain occupation, uh, but they are sort of giving invitations 
even to enroll nurses, they have given invitations on 65 points. So if you guys are, you know, uh, living outside Victoria and you believe that you have not been invited, I will recommend you to move to Victoria, you know, and submit your ROI because we are expecting at least uh, one round may occur. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, because 5th of May 2023, I reckon Diljan is uh, one of those dates when ROI is going to be finished. finished yeah. So we are expecting in rounds. So, uh, okay, uh, we've got a couple of comments, Diljan. So yeah, we'll yeah. be slowly going through the comments as well. Yes, yeah, sure. So, so I'll just read out the first question we have of the day. So it's it's from Maninder Chauhan, and it says that what are my chances? I have 65 points for 189 and 70 for 190 as a motor, motor mechanic. And like, uh, do we expect a 189 round? So I think he just addressed that issue that 189 we are not sure because of the invitation they provided in the first place. So it's like uh, hardly, it's, it's unlikely basically, but again, and again, we were talking about occupations. Like even if you talk about 190 or 491, the motor mechanic or the trade courses are not being given that much of importance as compared to others. But mm. uh, I think uh, Kamaljit would tell, what do you think? Yeah. See again, Diljan, in regards to, uh, you know, getting the invitations for motor mechanic, we have seen, you know, people were invited on 65 points, uh, considering the uh, motor mechanic occupations. And, uh, you know, again, uh, we are not expecting another 189 round this yeah, financial yeah. year, uh, given that, you know, so many candidates uh, were invited in the member December invitation round. So Maninda, I'll probably advise you that if you're in Victoria, it's always good to submit an ROI uh, for 491 occupation right. instead of 190 because you are sitting on 65 points, which is the minimum criteria. So then there would be possibilities. At least we can get 491, uh, you know, and then if the invitation uh, is going to take place for 189, there would be chances. All right, guys, uh, I think Maninda, I think uh, your uh, question has been answered and I'm sure that gives you a clear idea of that. So the next question is from Apurva, Apurva Gupta, and he says that any chance of general accountant for 190 with 80 points? Uh, see, again, uh, we have seen accountants being invited by Victoria. You know, one of the accountant has been invited on 90 points. Uh, yeah. uh, we did the application, the accountant uh, didn't even show any kind of salaries. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so what what we uh, Diljan basically Victoria is doing that they are keep, they are trying to keep the balance, balance. for the occupations. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I don't know why they have got the this sort of allergy from tradies. Yeah. You know they they haven't invited you know any kind of motor mechanics, carpenters, or even buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, sort of trades. But yeah, again with chefs and cooks, they have mentioned that we we're gonna be uh, you know giving you priorities for four nine one. One year. So yeah, again, Apurva, coming back to your questions, we have seen accountants being invited, but again, your your salary package and your points will matter. Uh, just if you've lodged your ROI for 190, I'll probably say just leave leave your ROI. Let's see, you know, we might have another one round, but I'll probably say maybe the next financial year might be more, uh, you know, a sort of successful news for you instead Absolutely. of this this yeah, financial year. Yeah, like we said, you know, the dates for ROI are closing on 5th of May. And then again, we have a couple of months, but again, depending on how many seats Victoria has left for this financial year, mm -hmm. maybe they will give a, have a one, one more round before we close. But again, we don't know what the numbers will come up. Maybe they will invite a few of them or will it happen? So that's, uh, the time will tell. So uh, moving on to the next question, uh, it's from, Shanky, mm. and she says that uh, he says that my wife got tourist visa and she's in Australia. Can we apply for student visa and in that in, and include me in that application? Yes, definitely. If your uh, if your visa uh, for your wife uh, visit, visit, visitor visa, you know, doesn't have any kind of conditions which is uh, you know stopping you, which is uh, eight five zero three. No for the stay is one of those conditions. So if you believe she doesn't have those kind of any conditions which stops her from lodging and visa while she's in Australia. Yes, she can lose a visa, and yes, she can include you or any dependents when she's making a valid visa applications for student visa. All right, thank you, Kamaldi. Uh, I'm sure thank you that, that clears your doubt. And this, uh, it may look like you know some of sometimes a small issues, but yeah, you need to consider everything. So, like uh, Kamaldi has pointed out, so you, first of all, you would need to look at your uh, you know visa grant letter and see whether that condition is there or not. Otherwise, I uh, you know it's better you know, you have to just look into it and then act accordingly. But just moving on, I would just uh, go on to the next question from Vikram. And he says that uh, uh, I'm pre-invited and nominated by Victoria in May, 
but do not submit my visa application within 60 days, will I be considered for nomination for Victoria again in financial year next year? The confusion is because the nomination approval would be in current financial year, whereas the expiry of the final invitation would be in the next financial year. So basically what he's saying that if he's invited this year, you know, whether he can launch the application in the next year. Yes, year. definitely. Uh, unfortunately, you won't be able to lodge a nomination or a ROI this year. Even the portal doesn't give you that kind of luxury to, you know, resubmit your ROI. Again, maybe something might have happened, Diljan, that he has decided not to proceed further with the visa application, which is always a good uh, sort of, uh, you know, thinking. If you believe you have claimed wrong points of, or if the information has been, uh, you know, uh, provided wrong in ROI or nomination applications. But yes, in next financial year, uh, you will be considered uh, for, uh, you know, uh, ROIs. Uh, what I believe is once 5th of May 2023, Diljan Victoria is going to close the, uh, you know, the nomination, uh, sorry, the ROIs uh, sort of applications, yep. then they will be providing at least maybe one or two rounds. Yep. And then everybody's going to get an email from Victoria. That's what I'm predicting that your ROI is no more uh, in force. Yep. And we might have to come up lodging a new ROIs okay. in new financial year. So yes, Vikram. Uh, Thanks for, you know, uh, questioning. And yes, you will be able to uh, submit a new ROI, given that if there are any other changes uh, for uh, Victoria. Yeah, absolutely. That's like a similar thing happened last year when, you know, people came up with this, that we got an email from Victoria regarding our ROI. So this is, I think that is what the process is. Once they have finished the round for the year, they would definitely, you know, like close everything and start afresh from next year. So mm. I think that is how they go about. So mm -hmm. like it's Kamalji said in, Put a point mm -hmm. so you would be eligible to apply next year mm -hmm. okay so moving on to the next question is from uh, Wasim, and he said any chances for a graphic designer on 60 points currently in new south wales so basically i think he's considering 190 or 491 if you add the points to that if he's sitting on 60 points Wasim, you're not even eligible you know yeah, first of all yeah well, yes. that's what i'm saying because maybe his 60 points is his own points, for himself you know? yes yeah. for himself 190 you know it's pretty big question because yeah. new south wales has been one of those states uh, who all, uh, always prefer that you know full cream candidate yeah. rather than one of the skim, skim milk, skim milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah so uh, i'll probably say in your case Basim, it's always good that your occupation uh, is not that you know uh, popular, popular or i shouldn't use the say popular i'm saying like populated occupation yeah. so there are chances that but again your points have to come up because 60 points i doubt it yeah. you know especially in, uh, when you are considering new south wales all right thank you Tomaldi. uh thank you for that uh clearing the point and next question is from adnan adnan mazhar and he's a software engineer 90 points for 189 any chance to be invited this financial year or the next financial year that's what he's pushing now see adnan as we have previously discussed that uh, 189 rounds when they were, you know, uh, invitations were given in uh, last year, you know, the amount of invitations which the department has given, we don't think so that there might be another round. You never know, but you are sitting on very good points. Uh, there are high possibilities, but if you're in Australia and you're in Victoria, we'll probably suggest you to submit 190 application as well, because you're sitting on good points. All right, thank you, Kamaljit. Uh, moving on, uh, we've got a question from Rahim. And he says that he's got 75 points and mm. 80 points for 190 mm -hmm. as an electronic engineer in Victoria. Mm. So what are the chances? See, again, the points are not too bad, uh, Rahim, but uh, in regards to your salary, uh, Victoria will be putting a weightage on uh, upon your salary as well and how much experience you are holding. And uh, you're saying I got 75 points and 80. Okay, so you are 75 individual, individual points, points and yeah. 80 points for 190. So yes, the points are not too bad, you know, but again, engineering uh, occupations, we do prefer to go up to 85 to 90 points. Okay, so there are chances, but again, your salary is gonna be uh, that kind of, uh, you know, uh, the selection criteria, your salary might be one of those uh, bullet points, which Victoria will be considering before giving you the invitation. Yeah, so one thing, I would just like to have a, a question here because, you know, like sometimes you talk about the salary package you know, and how Victoria is uh, putting weightage on the salary. Mm. But again, we have seen, you know, some certain occupations mm. which have been invited as zero, you know, sort of a, a salary. Mm. So can you explain how does that work? Do you have any sort of a magic formula? How, how do they get about it? Now, see, again, in regards to uh, 
magic formula is basically you know what they are uh, doing here is Diljan. they are considering occupations uh, which are basically in health sector so we are seeing that uh, you know in health sector you know they are inviting candidates who are not even working in their occupation or in any occupation at all so they are looking after that community uh, sort of occupations first and then they are coming back to social workers then coming back to teachers and then if you guys are you know coming up with skilled uh, workers or a skilled partner so yes there is no such formula but more or less i would probably say uh, that what they are focusing on here is uh, that you know uh, health sector is going to be one of the crucial uh, formula i can say yeah that victoria is considering at the moment yeah absolutely like with the with the covid covid 19 happening you know and then this uh, situation has opened up a lot of you know vacancies for and demand for this uh, social and medical sort of profession mm -hmm. and those who are there they are very lucky and let's moving on guys uh, there's a next question is from chetna mm -hmm. and uh, this is uh, hi guys we are applying for 190 visa as a pharmacy technician mm -hmm. we have one year of experience as a technician but during the probation period it was a casual job then part time but we did at least 25 to 28 hours per week so I'm wondering, does it really matter if it's full-time, part-time, or casual, as it's a number of hours that matters? For general skill migration, minimum 20 hours should be fine. Okay, what uh, part-time and full-time are considered for 4A2 visa applications. Uh, in your case, uh, Chetana, uh, Chaudhary, uh, you should be fine if you've done minimum 20 hours per week, uh, you know, after the desired uh, qualification. Uh, we're not sure whether you've done bachelor's or master's, but yeah. So in regards to that, you, you'll be fine, man. Okay, thank you, Kamaljit. Uh, and the next question in we moving on forward is from Ken Lau. And he said, if you do you think Western Australia nomination invitation round will take place next month, first week of May for 190 registered nurse? See again, Ken, you know, uh, Western Australia has been one of those uh, favorite states uh, who have been inviting candidates from offshore, from uh, you know, different states. Uh, given that the amount of seats and all those allocations which have been given to the state, we probably still have you know at least one to two rounds left i'll probably say so there are high chances that you will be invited because your occupation is in high demand all right all right ken i think uh, that gives you a lot of hope and we do believe that you know with your uh, occupation and the state you're in mm. you have a very very good chance and uh, it should be sooner than later and then you should be invited as well and gaurav saini uh, has a question regarding his points he's uh, as a chef and sitting at 75 points in new south wales see again new south wales gaurav you know has given preference to uh, high points candidates mm. uh those are not too bad points you know 75 considering mm. but again we'll probably advise you if possible if you can jump to 80 to 85 okay that means you might have to score eight each okay so there are there might be chances for 190. Well, thank you Kamali. the next one is from prabjot and i said these are 400 personal is eligible for 4A2 visa. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, 400 personal, uh, I think it's incomplete question. Yeah, man, I, I yes. think yeah, if you can just put in a bit more information yes. in this question, Prabhu, that would uh, make it easier for us to understand and mm. answer your question. So while you do that, we just move on to the next one. It's from uh, Sukh Kamal. And it's saying, if my nomination for 491 Victoria is refused, can I apply for Victoria 190? Uh, that will be next financial year. Yeah. So if you have been refused again, uh, six months uh, of ban has been implemented on you, but uh, we're not sure why it has been refused. Uh, so yes, uh, I'll probably say six months barrier uh, will stop you from. All right. So when we just are on these questions, we need to ask one more question regarding this. When we say that you know if it's been refused and we get a ban for six months, hmm. so does that ban six months count in the same financial year, or does it carry forward to the next financial year as well? No, no it is six months from the day it has you have been banned. Okay, okay. unless there has been changes uh, in your circumstances. Okay. You know, again, you believe that maybe the occupation might have changed. For example, I was an enroll nurse, then I become resistant nurse. Or if the points have changed, you can request uh, the department, uh, the okay. state government, to waive off the ban, okay. you know, and then hopefully you can make the new application. All right, thank you, Kamal. Thanks for clearing. And Prabhjot, I'm sure I'll just wait for a question. And so, Kamal, I think uh, you have a uh, sort of an idea, and uh, yeah, you have to basically you can apply next year, but uh, we just need to know the refusal. You know what the reason for that? 
moving on uh, because the next question is from uh, Raja Kopal. Uh, he just wants to know what about 491. So I'm not sure what about 491 is. Maybe the asking Victoria, because, maybe. So yeah, yeah maybe 190. Invitation, yeah. Yes, 190 rounds. Uh, you know, they took places. Uh, we are expecting a 491 to happen soon. You know, given that the candidates who are living in metro area can uh, apply for ROIs for 491, they must have an intentions uh, to relocate themselves to uh, regional Victoria once they've been, uh, you know, granted the visa. Yeah. So yes, there are chances that, uh, you know, they might be inviting candidates for 491. Well. Thank you for that. And uh, the next question uh, we have is from Hussein Shabar. And he said, please talk about accountants PR points in detail. And what would be the future for accountants? Thanks. See, uh, Husnan, uh, Shabir, accountants have, you know, already been sort of uh, a target where a department has not given preference to this particular occupations. So considering the future of accountants, I don't think so. It's going to be that happy. Mm -hmm. uh, news for you guys, you know, it's always good that you should switch your career, which is more into community uh, or health sector. You know, so that in future, you know, it's 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 possible for you candidates to uh, go into permanent residency. Uh, but in regards to accountants, uh, different states react a different way uh, to accountants. If you are in Victoria, not that good. You know, let's say Western Australia might be a good option. South Australia might be a good option as well. So yes, PR points and all those kind of things are gonna go very hard for accountants. You know. But yes, yeah, so it's always good to have that, you know, uh, a second option in future to just make sure that if accounting or a scale assessment is not helping you out, what else can be done? All right. Thank you for that. And uh, just moving on to the next question. Uh, we have a lot of questions, guys, and I'm sure uh, we are trying to answer each and every of them. But uh, if we have missed a couple of questions, so you can just maybe repost it once again, because, you know, it's a uh, we are having questions pretty fast, you know, so sometimes very hard to read each and every of them. But I am sure you would understand that and keep uh, putting in your questions. So the next one is from Lahini. And uh, he says that I have a Bachelor of Business Analytics and I don't work in that field. I'm still able to apply for ROI for Victoria. See, Lahini, if you don't have skill assessment, uh, you know, then it's going to be a question that what occupation uh, you are going into. Uh, let's say if you've got a skill assessment, you know, and then you want to submit an ROI, yes, you can submit an ROI. Uh, even if you are not working in your nominal occupation, you can type in zero salary uh, so that you are not giving wrong information in the ROI. Okay. All right. I'll, 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 I think that, that clears her doubt. And there's there's a second question from Ken. I think he's for the like the answer. We are, we are already answered this question, but the next one is coming like uh, no work experience. That means I do not need to provide evidence as a registered nurse in Western Australia? Uh, see, again, you know, Western Australia has been that easy uh, on uh, most of the occupations, yeah. you know, graduate pathway. Uh, so I'll probably say 190 can be a good option. Uh, but yes, we will uh, have to research more onto this in specific that particular occupation and advise you accordingly. But they do expect uh, health occupations to provide one year of work experience in their nominated occupations. Okay. Thank you. So we'll like you, uh, come on, you said, we'll just have to look into that in individually, you know, and uh, then we can obviously have a very, very clear picture about that. And moving on, it's the next question is from Vikram. And he said, thank you for your advice concerning Victor's rules. Do you think they would invite me again in 2024? Okay, so the one we had already answered after the six, the 60 day ban or the 60, because he didn't apply for the visa. So yeah, yeah, if there is no six months ban, you know, yeah. you'll be able to uh, reapply for a ROI. Uh, I don't think so. There should be any kind of issue. But again, uh, why would they invite you if so? If you have just forgot to lodge the visa, you know, then it's a different scenario. But if the points have changed and all those kind of things, then again, uh, it 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 will matter your application for your you know ROI. Okay. Uh, the next question we have is from Agni Nishant Roy, and he said, a software engineer. What are the chances with eighty five or one eight nine in Victoria? Uh, see again. I mean, the points are not too bad. The things which Victoria is going to look out on is your salary package and more or less uh, how much work experience you are coming up with. Let's take an example. We are seeing candidates from offshore even being invited on 80 points uh, from, uh, you know, your particular idea occupations. But given that uh, they have got like five years to eight years of work experience, 
So you are sitting on good points, but your salary package is going to be one of their crucial uh, sort of uh, situ uh, scenario, which uh, Victoria will take into consideration uh, before inviting you. All right, thank you for that. And uh, uh, before we move on to the next questions, I would just uh, need to discuss a few more questions which we had in mind. So, uh, so let's talk about the 482 visa. So as many of them are aware, it's employer sponsored, but if you can just, you know, for those who are not aware of it, so just can you explain what is a 482 visa? And uh, let's start with the explanation. What is it? And what, what is the purpose of it? See, 482 visa, uh, guys, is an employer sponsor visa. Uh, if you believe that, you know, uh, some employer, you've got some employer who wants to uh, nominate you, basically, or sponsor you uh, for a, a given occupation, uh, then uh, you can proceed further with 482 visa application. So it, it's basically an employer sponsored okay. uh, temporary skill shortage visa uh, is the name of the visa. Okay. So if you're talking about 482 visa, you know, so the, like if, when we're talking about uh, GSM visa category, we always, the first thing that comes to our mind is skill assessment. Mm. So we always say that if you don't have a skill assessment, you can't start the process of GSM. So how does it work for the 482 visas? Uh, of course, for 482, uh, some of the occupations will require skill assessment. Uh, but just the point which I should clear here is, let's say, for example, if I've done certificate three and certificate four, uh, which is the minimum qualification for an occupation called chef, and I've got, uh, you know, eligible uh yeah. work experience to launch the visa i do not require skill assessment because i'll get a waiver because i've studied in australia so yes skill assessment uh you know normally uh, people will just read on the website and say skill assessment is required but again it's not mandatory for certain occupations so we have to see uh, whether that particular occupation you're applying a visa and whether the skill assessment is required or not so while we are on this topic so uh, i would just like to not put emphasis on the skill assessment. We're talking about the work experience. So when we are talking work experience, so is there any sort of like we just had a question regarding whether it should be full time for you know like casual employment, full time employment, and how does that work and how do they calculate the hours and does it need to be uh, you know like before we apply for it and how does can just explain a bit more regarding this experience uh, sort of a uh, requirement? Mm -hmm. uh, see again. Uh... For 482 work experience, guys, uh, casual work experience is not considered. Uh, you cannot use casual work experience. It has to be full time, two years, or equivalent part time. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, what does that mean? Is we are expecting a full time role. Uh, but if you have been working for part time equivalent, let's say if I was working two years full time or four years part time, uh, I can utilize that work experience, but casual work experience will not be considered for 482 visa applications. Right. So like uh, staying on the experience part of it. So if we say that we have experience, hmm. you know, for two years or whatever the amount is. So how do we, what are the documents that we that are required to satisfy that uh, we have the genuine experience and what are the things that we can provide to satisfy that criteria? Yes, see, uh, Diljan, this is a very good question, uh, guys, you know, that, uh, Normally, when you will see 482, you know, people will say, okay, 482 requires two years of work experience, but they do not uh, explain uh, what they are thinking is, okay, I've been, I started working in 2020 yeah. and now it's 2023 mm -hmm. or 22. I've got two years. No, it doesn't work like that. Uh, what we uh, normally ask candidates is to provide pay slips. Okay. Uh, so if you're looking at two years of pay slip, that is 104 weeks of pay slips, uh, which must be full time, you know. Uh, so if you are considering, okay, I want to go for 482, mm -hmm. you know, make sure you have got 104 weeks of pay slips and uh, verbally utilizing that as, and making that statement that, okay, I've, I've got two years of work experience is mm -hmm. not good enough if you are not able to provide uh, documentations to the department. Absolutely. Just staying on this, you know, like we said, it's uh, two years, you know, somebody says that we have worked for two years and we have experience, but again, in between, maybe they, they may be a few months in a way the person may have sort of, uh, you know, fallen sick or gone for a holiday, you know, so mm -hmm. for a few months, obviously he won't have, you know, pay slips maybe for all the period. So basically what you're saying is we need to gather everything together and make sure that the pay slips we have that covers 104 weeks mm -hmm. for making two years of experience. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, guys, that's uh, very clear now. So whatever information we require, we need to put it on paper and get it done, you know, and then we just can't assume anything. So we have to look at all the pay slips and how many hours you have worked in the pay slips. So, all right, so uh, I'll just pause on this uh, topic for now. And before we move on to the other question, otherwise I think I'll miss a few of them. 
So the next question we're going to answer is for Amandeep Kho. And it says that what are the chances for invitation of occupation early childhood educators for 190 visa in the next financial year? See, again, uh, Aman, and she's sitting on 70 points. She's mentioned in the second comment. Oh, yeah, so, I mean, point, yeah. the occupation which you are holding uh, seems pretty uh, demanding in Victoria. Of course, Victoria is looking for, uh, you know, uh, early childhood teachers as the community is growing and we are seeing families, uh, you know. And uh, so I'll probably say there are high chances. And given that the points you are sitting on, we have seen teachers being invited on 65 points. We are sitting on 70 points. So it should be fine. But again, let's uh, wait until July, you know, and see if Victoria is going to uh, implement or, uh, you know, come up with any kind of uh, new uh, regulations mm -hmm. or requirements. Uh, but I don't think so, uh, because most of the states have been easier, uh, you know, on these occupations. So you, 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 are, you are doing good. You'll be fine. All right. Uh, the next question is from Nanda Kumar. And he says, I have 80 points as civil engineer graduate offshore. My own brother is citizen in Western Australia. If I get invited 491 Victoria, can I move to Perth to work and settle? So basically, yeah. See, again, it, the visa itself does not have any kind of conditions, uh, but it's more or less an obligation for the state that you must uh, you know, come and uh, live in the state for the set duration of the period of obligation which you have signed with the states. Uh, so, but again, you know, it's always good. Uh, to have a confirmation from the state before, uh, you know, uh, relieving mm -hmm. yourself and moving to any other state. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so like we, it's common just pointed out, you know, say, yeah, it requires us to, you know, normally it's an obligation that we commit to staying in the state for the next coming three to five years. But again, circumstances change and there may be change of situation. So we can obviously, it's not in our control, but it's obviously uh, good to play safe, you know, and then uh, inform them and then move forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Coming to the next question from Subhash Bohra. So it's a, what about programmer or project administrator in Victoria? All of the states are nominating this occupation. Uh, see, Subhash, uh, again, Victoria has been most affected state by COVID pandemic. You know, so we do understand, uh, you know, this occupation has been invited by uh, some of the other states because most of the states were not affected that by COVID as such Victoria was. So in your uh, occupation, I'll probably say we might have to wait a little bit. Or it's always good to relocate to some other state if some other states are, uh, you know, nominating this particular occupation. All right. Thank you, guys. And just need to thank you all for joining in and uh, uh, asking so many questions. You know, that means a lot of people are interested and they have a lot of queries. So, um, thanks for uh, thanks you all for joining. And if uh, your friends are not yet joined in, maybe you can send them the link and they can you know, take advantage of this session and you know clear the doubts as well. And moving on to the next question is from uh, Nitish Puri. So he said, sir, I have 90 points offshore mechanical engineer. EOI is latest as my agent just updated some information. Is there any chance for Victoria 190 in the next round? See again, Nitish, considering that if you have got 90 points, that means uh, you might have utilized your work experience uh, because uh, a candidate who makes a 90 points from offshore uh, gives us an, an indication that you might be uh, utilizing those skilled employment points as well. Uh, Victoria is giving preferences to those EUIs uh, who have uh, utilized that skilled employment points. Uh, so there are high chances. Okay, it's always good to make sure when you are submitting your uh, ROI, which is registering uh, of in, uh, interest in Victoria, uh, no wrong information must be submitted Absolutely. or else, you know, uh, you, uh, you'll get a six months of ban for no reason. But yes, in your case, I'll probably say there are high chances, but it's more or less we have to wait upon how Victoria are reacting. There might be one or two rounds where they may, you know, give invitations to IT sectors engineers. That's what I'm thinking because they have given invitations uh, to health sector teachers and, you know, social workers. But we are still waiting on IT sectors okay. and engineering uh, to be specific uh, on, the, uh, on the amount sort of situations. Well, thank you, Kamal, uh, for clearing all this. Uh... So Kamalji, before we move on uh, to other questions, uh, continuing from where we left for the 482, you know, regarding the experience and documentation. So we just move on to the job ready program because we're talking about skills assessment and it's like for the trade, you know, for trade occupation, this is the most important thing. And we just need to figure out, you know, when and because it's taking a long time now. So we should basically educate the viewers when we should start and not delay that thing, you know. 
So what are the time frames currently for the job ready program and how does it go about now? Uh, you know, job ready program uh, is one of the programs uh, done by international students uh, when they are going to obtain, uh, you know, their skill assessment in trade occupations. Trade Recognition Australia is one of the authorities uh, who does this job ready program. Uh, they have gone into, you know, ridiculous amount of uh, time uh, to make a decision on the step number one, which is eligibility check, Absolutely, which yeah. has gone from three months to six months. I don't know why they have done it, uh, which is basically, you know, uh, frustrating uh, most of the international uh, students uh, in regards to, uh, you know, starting and moving on to step number two. So guys, if you are doing trade course, you know, and you believe that you have done minimum qualification already, you should not wait for your, uh, you know, diploma to be finished before you can submit the eligibility check so what i'm trying to explain here let's take a scenario uh, let's say if i'm if i'm doing certificate three in carpentry and i'm doing diploma of building and construction and if i finished my certificate three in carpentry i can straight away apply for my eligibility check uh, normally what candidates will do is they'll john they will come to us and they will say okay uh, you know i was waiting for my diploma to finish and Absolutely. then i thought you know i'll be applying for my eligibility check so now you should utilize your work uh, utilize your time uh, in regards to eligibility check so once you have done your minimum qualification you should make an application for eligibility check straight away yeah absolutely i was just about to ask the same question which you already answered so i was basically we have seen a lot of you know clients coming here and we just asked them that you know since you've heard you have read on the news everywhere you know that it's taking a long time for the step one to be granted why haven't you applied for your step one and the answer comes is that you know we were just waiting that once we complete our diploma we'll apply for tr and then we'll go the first step you know so but the thing is if you do follow that procedure it will, you are wasting six months in at least of your tr so it's basically it's better to get it at, in advance you know so like it, kamaljis has already told you so once you qualify with the minimum uh, sort of a qualification for that trade occupation you should lodge in your first step and then save time on that that's right all right so talking about the job reference so we have you know come across situations where a person is on a dependent visa you know so a student visa dependent and then once they apply for tr and the dependent this move on to studying sort of a course you know any trade course and because he wants to obviously do a job in that as well and then they try basically try to make two options for tr you know for pr pathway mm. so are they allowed to basically apply for a skill assessment once they complete the studies on TR as a dependent? That will be a waste of time <clears throat> and money because if you've never held the student visa as a primary applicant, fellas, uh, you won't be eligible uh, for the step number one of job ready program, which is eligibility check. So guys, you know, we have seen uh, candidates being advised by, uh, you know, people who are not registered migration agents uh, who come up with the limited or no knowledge about migration regulations and laws. So make sure uh, when you are uh, being advised by a candidate, you know, it's always uh, good to have a, a little bit of research on the candidate that he or she must be a registered migration agent to advise you whether or not uh, that particular candidate should proceed further with any kind of course or even any kind of skill assessment. So in your situation, Diljan, because the candidate uh, who has arrived in Australia on a student dependent visa, and uh, once the primary applicant got his 485 visa, uh, now he has been advised by you know any uh, dodgy agent or i don't know who advised them yeah. uh, to do this uh, particular course uh, then he he just wasted his time because uh, the eligibility criteria for the tra says that if you want to do a job ready program you must have held a student visa as a primary applicant all right so yeah this uh, this is sort of a you know a loophole for people those who are unaware of the critical sort of a, a criteria which is holding of a student visa as a primary applicant mm. so guys if anyone is in that situation or already studying you know thinking that they are eligible for that so rethink that thing you know and then take a professional advice so that we can obviously you know save time you know you can save time and uh, all good okay so moving on let's talk about the job since we are on job already program you know not everyone is doing a job mm. so they may be a lot of candidates, those who are running their own business or working on ABN as contractors or subcontractors, you know. Mm. So are they eligible for the job ready program and uh, what are the things they need to consider? Yes, uh, guys, if you are, uh, you know, doing any sort of occupations, which is uh, major in building and construction, uh, considering, for example, uh, 
uh, bricklaying, carpentry, you know, tiling, uh, all those kind of occupations which are major in construction. Uh, you know, uh, TRA do understands that Department of Home Affairs, uh, Immigration do understands that that is not possible uh, sometime to work uh, under, you know, TFN for those occupations. So yes, you can uh, work and uh, complete your job ready program uh, on Avian. Uh, keeping that thing in mind, you must have all the necessary documentations uh, to uh, claim, uh, make the claim and support your claim that, you know, you are uh, doing the job ready program on Avian. All right. Uh, I think that clears our doubts on people working on ABNs for job ready program. And since we were talking about the, the uh, employer sponsored and the skill assessment, so moving on, just uh, touch on the one at six visas, which is the permanent uh, part of the four at two program. So can you just guide us on the one at six and just a brief uh, touch on that? Yeah. Yes, guys. One at six visa is again also employer sponsored visas uh, where an employer will nominate you for permanent residency visas. One eighty six, uh, you know, we'll be talking about ERT, the, the direct entry stream. You know, four eight two is also employer sponsored, but not a permanent stage. It's a temporary uh, skilled short, uh, shortage visa where uh, employer is not able to uh, find any Australian citizen or permanent resident to fulfill the skilled working uh, position. Uh, so they uh, then have to go on uh, to sponsor someone uh, who is a skilled uh, international <coughs> citizen, uh, probably say non-citizen uh, of Australia. And then once uh, that non-citizen has done uh, at least three years of work experience with the same employer, he can proceed for the uh, lodging on to 186 on TRT stream. Or if the non-citizen has got already uh, three years of work experience, uh, even from offshore, or combined onshore, uh, the employer can sponsor them straight away for 186, which is a direct entry stream. Uh, given that direct entry stream will require skill assessment at the time of application for 186. So it's 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 a, Diljan, a very good pathways. You know, we have seen uh, many occupations like IT, mm -hmm. you know, hospitality occupations like chef uh, being, you know, permanent on uh, 186 visas. So if you believe, guys, you know, you are skilled workers, but uh, you are getting old and your age is not meeting those required points uh, under general skill migration and the competition is very high and your employer is happy to, uh, you know, uh, sponsor you, uh, then I'll probably say 482 to 186 pathways, one of those best pathways, a candidate can uh, proceed further where he does not need to uh, compete uh, with, you know, all those kind of points, uh, systems. Uh, to get the invitations for PR is more or less if you are meeting the eligibility criteria uh, for sponsor uh, and sponsor can, you know, happily sponsor you. I'll probably say this can be one of those best visas. All right. Uh, we have just uh, we are touched on this one at six. So basically uh, what we have found out is that, you know, if somebody is on a 42, they need to be working with the same employer for three years and then move on to the TRD stream or they can apply directly if they have three years of experience prior to that. All right, so once you have covered this, so just uh, before we go on to the last session or the end of the program, we will just need to uh, touch on uh, or just uh, discuss some issues which are very, very important and which are generally ignored by people thinking that, uh, that nobody's gonna uh, notice them. And that is the, uh, the bogus documents, you know? So people have and are providing uh, documents that are not genuine and they're trying to mislead the department thinking that you know we are they won't be noticed be noticed or you know nothing will happen to them so that is a very wrong way of thinking so you should be alert you know and because with this technology it is very very easy now for the department to get uh, into that and find out so Kamalji so can you just uh, tell us you know what are the consequences and how, what we should not do to get into that uh, terrible situation See, first of all, guys, you know, uh, desperation is one of those, uh, you know, main reasons I should say that candidates uh, should be smart enough and to control their feelings uh, when they are making applications to Australia from India or from any uh, sort of other countries, you know, because the department has gone very, gone very, very strict on making sure that you guys are not providing any kind of fraudulent documentations or fraudulent or misleading information uh, to the department. So. What we are talking about here is, for example, we have seen, uh, we have read, we have heard uh, that candidates are providing documentations like fake IELTS, fake PTE scores. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen candidates providing fake birth certificates. We have seen candidates providing, uh, you know, fake 
uh, sort of a year 10, year 12 uh, certifications to the department. Again, guys, you know, that is one of the reasons uh, that, uh, you know, immigration will take a very strict action upon us, you know, making sure that they might be banning you for three years uh, before you can make a well visa application to Australia. Moreover, when it comes to identity, uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, documentation that ban year can go on moving towards 10 year time period. So I'll probably suggest you guys that if uh, when you are lodging an applications for Australia, you know, we do understand that uh, Australia is a beautiful country. People love to visit Australia and they want to settle down here on a permanent basis. But that does not mean that you must be providing or utilizing any kind of, you know, misleading or bogus documentations uh, to do your thing, you Absolutely. know, and it does not look good in our community, guys. You know, we have already seen uh, universities have started taking steps towards this, uh, uh, you know, matter. And uh, in coming future, if people uh, are not getting serious about this, the reason behind this is, Diljan, we have seen uh, candidates who have applied, you know, student visas from agents who are not registered. Absolutely. You know, we we have heard about it. You know, there are agents sitting out there on markets who have got limited knowledge about Australian visa processes, uh, or they might be doing visas or, of different countries, like maybe Canada, UK, or Absolutely. even Europe. And uh, they believe, you know, your life is like a gamble. Yeah, you know, absolutely. they are just, yeah. they're just throwing the dice away and seeing whatever the luck kicks in, you know, they are trying to get you the visa upon. So it's your responsibilities, uh, guys, that you should make sure that when you are submitting a visa application, uh, it has to be done by a registered migration agent who can guide you in a proper manner, who can educate you in a proper manner about your visa applications so that the consequences, as you previously mentioned, bogus documentation, misleading the department is a very uh, sort of a critical uh, thing nowadays. And again, you know, artificial intelligence has gone into that extent that department will have unknown sources to find out where the document has been generated from. And you know, uh, and what what you're trying to do. So I'll probably advise you we shouldn't do that. Yeah, absolutely. Again, you know, like sometimes you know, uh, so if a visa application you know uh, goes goes through and they get a visa grant, you know, that can come back when you apply for a next visa or extension. Anything, anytime they can get back to you, and then that thing will have consequences. So it's not that if you can get away with you know once you know it's not a thing. So obviously be mindful of that. And always provide genuine and original documents so that you, know, you don't have any sort of a unnecessary stress and don't you know basically put your future in jeopardy so like we discussed you know documents can be anything related to studies passport employment so whatever you're providing provide a genuine thing and do the right thing always and take professional advice and we are here to advise you and provide you, you know, genuine uh, practical advice what is possible and not possible. So it's uh, your choice. You can come and visit any of the Aussie group uh, offices all over Melbourne or all over Australia and take professional advice from them. And before we go to the end of the program, so we're almost there and uh, we have a couple of questions. So I'll just take one of them randomly. And that's from Vishnu Singh. And he said, uh, sir, I'm studying in Western Australia at, and I'm um, chef, skilled assessment positive and 65 points. Can I be eligible to apply for 190? And I have lodged my EUI in December. Yeah, so if you already lodged your EUI, you know, Vishnu, that means you, you know, again, EUI is the uh, is the criteria which Western Australia is found, uh, following. You know, if you, if you lodge your EUI, just wait for it. You know, again, I'll probably say for, you should select 491 in your EUI as well. Uh, it, there are possibilities uh, that they might be inviting you for 491 because given that points which you are holding are minimum points only. Okay. All right, uh, guys, uh, we have the next question which I'm gonna uh, read out to you is from Indraji Singhal. And so what are the chances of Victoria 491 with 85 points as civil engineer working in level three job in construction industry? Hmm. See, uh... In the G Singh, you know, you are holding good points, uh, which is 85 points. And you are you you've mentioned that you're working in level three job in construction industry. Uh, now, with 491, we have seen that Victoria has given invitations uh, to candidates uh, who are not even, uh, you know, doing any kind of job, especially when we are considering engineering sector. 
you know so there are high chances in your case uh, so i'll probably advise you uh, to wait you know if you have lost your roi now you've mentioned that uh, you know you are working in level 3 job in construction so if you have been working on abn and if you have lost your roi and if you have claimed your salary uh, be very sure upon that if you are working on abn there will be a lot many things to take into consideration now i'm not an accountant i'll just give you an indication that uh, you have to pay your super you have to pay your taxes you have to pay your gst you know so if you have mentioned the salary in your roi uh, which includes everything then it might be an issue you know for you so just make sure that you know either you must be working on tfn it's always good or you know you should try to see uh, that what are the you know deductions which i have to make before i can submit it on the roi uh, so considering your case uh, 85 points are good points for 491 especially your occupation as well uh, we might just have to wait you know to get the invitation yeah absolutely guys like everyone those who have applied or you know, wanting to apply before the 5th of may so we can only hope that there's a couple of more rounds in this financial year so that people those who have been waiting for the last uh, few years or few months basically that they have one last a uh, couple of last chances at the dice you know so that uh, they don't have to go into the financial year hoping for again this whole thing again but i hope that we have a few invitations on and we will have a clear picture of what's happening so guys uh before we end the program i would just need to educate you that we do have uh, other services as well so we provide us, uh, help with uh, your courses you know regarding any education matters we do migration as we are with, uh, sitting with the agent you know this, uh, guiding us on that we do also offer professional year programs. So if somebody has done uh, some studies in IT or you know accounting, if they want to do professional programs to get the skill assessment or to get get extra five points, you can contact us. There's a team who can help you out with that. Uh, we do have the online tutorials for PT, CCL preparation. So basically, we are providing all sort of services you know that relate and that are directly connected to your PR pathways. So guys, just log on to our website and explore all the options so that uh, you are up to date with all the data information and you have all the tools to get your PR on time. All right, Kamalji, thank you for this informative session. We've answered as many questions as we could. And thanks to Kamalji, he's answered most of the questions and I'm sure his expertise would have helped you all. And uh, hopefully if you still have any confusions or questions, you can uh, join in next week as well. So we'll be having the sessions every Friday, five o'clock. So there will be a lot of open forums for you to ask questions, or you can just call your nearest office, visit us. So we would be more than happy to help you in any way we can. So Kamaljit, before we end the program, so would you just like to say a few ending words to encourage the people out there? Yep, that's right, guys. You know, uh, apart from migration services, there are a lot many services uh, which all this group is providing. Uh, we have got our online PT tutorials, uh, CCL. Again, we have got our new uh, OcuSearch app, uh, which is focusing on migration itself, where you can go and see what skill level your job is in. Moreover, you know, it will assess you on uh, uh, sort of different states. Uh, your occupation will be assessed and it gives you a lot of, you know, uh, EYs invitations, uh, uh, updates as well. So again, every Friday, guys, 5 p.m., uh, you know, we are starting uh, this uh, sessions which will be hashtag uh, ask Aussies. So you can ask us any sort of questions in regards to your visa matters, in regards to your education uh, studies matters. Uh, and again, it's always good that the information uh, provided to you must be through a registered migration agent. So in coming time period, you will be meeting all our agents from different offices and do provide us and feedback, do comment us. Uh, if you are liking these sessions, do share it with your friends and relatives. Uh, who have got uh, you know uh, any kind of queries in regards to visas and uh, in coming time period we hope that everybody will achieve their dream of getting permanent residency in australia and become citizen all right thank you Kamaljit. thank you for giving everyone hope and uh, i'm sure in with time you know sooner than later we all will be settled here and thanks guys for joining us and it was a very lively session with so many questions and Quite is coming in. Uh, we would uh, love your feedback and uh, hopefully uh, see you next time on next Friday. Thank you. Stay Thank tuned. you, guys.